Hello and welcome to another session of Remote Learning and Physics. As always, let's begin with retrieval practice. Number one, state Newton's second law as an equation. Number two, what is the unit of acceleration? Number three, what energy is stored by objects because of their position? For example, their height. And finally, what is the definition of half-life? Pause the video, have a go. When you're ready, continue. The first one, Newton's second law, can be summarized as force equals mass times acceleration. Number two, the unit of acceleration is meters per second squared. It's ms squared. Yeah m slash s squared. Energy stored by objects because of their position, their height, its gravitational potential. The higher the object, the more energy it stores. And half-life is the time taken for half the radioactive nuclei in a sample to decay. Today we're going to look at Newton's third law, the idea of action and reaction describing situations involving reaction forces and applying Newton's third law to what are called equilibrium situations, balanced situations. So, to begin, can you all state Newton's third law of motion? Well, you may indeed have heard this expression, every action, well done if you get it by yourself, has an equal and opposite reaction. And then the sketch and the pictures on the right, you can see this in action. What does the law mean in practice? Well, it refers to interactions between pairs of objects and involves a pair of forces. The forces exerted acting on each other, are equal and opposite. Now, equal in what and opposite in what? Well, the size of each force is the same. They are equal size and opposite refers to the direction. In this example, one to the left and one to the right. Notice that there are two forces, two objects, and two directions. This is always the way it interaction pairs, illustrating Newton's third law. So for example, as we said, their forces always come in pairs. You push on a wall, the wall pushes back. If you push hard enough, Either you'll push yourself back or the wall will collapse. One is more likely than the other. The key to this is not to overthink it. So when we describe these kind of pairs of forces, A does something, it could be a push or a pull, exerts a force on the second object, B. So that is our action. And then the reaction is simply the opposite. B does the same thing, a push or a pull, to object A. So here are three examples. Can you say what's pushing what for the action and reaction in each example? Pause the video and have a go for yourself. When you're ready, continue. So, number one, the tire pushes the road, and the reaction, the road, pushes the tire. This causes the car to move forward. Now, the road's not going anywhere, but if you had some loose gravel, that might be kicked off to the left somewhere. Gravity is a strange example, but gravity 
also exhibits this. So in this example, a ball is being pulled by the Earth. The Earth pulls the ball, but because gravity is an attractive force between two objects, the ball also pulls the Earth. Now, clearly, the ball is much, much smaller than the Earth, so we don't notice any movement of the Earth. It's much too massive to have a noticeable effect. We do notice the ball falling to the ground. And again, this doesn't matter whether the ball is in the air, whether it's on the ground, whether it's thrown. We're referring here to the interaction between the ball and the Earth, causing that gravitational attraction, not any other example at the moment. And then the final one here, the rocket pushes the gas, the gas pushes the rocket. So, imagine a satellite in space, and an astro astronaut even, touching it, standing next to it. Now, if he is to push the satellite away from him, what is going to happen? Well, the satellite will be pushed to the left, and he will be pushed to the right. Now, depending on the relative masses, which one's bigger, which one's heavier, one of them will move faster than the other. The lighter object will move the fastest. The heavier object will move the slowest. But both of them will have the same force, left and right. Here are three more examples for you. Again, describe them in terms of the third law. So we have a rocket takeoff a book on a table, and a man jumping off a boat. Have a go, and when you're ready, proceed to the next slide. So, for the rocket, again, we've had this example in previous slides, with a rocket taking off. The rocket exerts a force, it pushes on the gases being ejected, it pushes on them, and the gas is apply a force which is equal in size or magnitude and in the opposite direction to the rocket. This lifts the rocket off the surface and pushes the gas down. Much more down to earth now, a book on a table. Well, the book pushes on the table and the table pushes back on the book. This is our normal reaction force. The size of both forces is the same. And again, number three, man jumping on the pier. The man pushes on the boat. The boat applies an equal and opposite reaction force on the man. The man is pushed forward as he jumps and the boat is pushed back. A pair of forces, a pair of objects, equal in size and opposite in direction. And one final example, a pair of skaters on the ice. What happens if one pushes the other? Well, both skaters will move in opposite directions. The force applied as they push is equal in size and opposite in direction. And that causes one to move to the left and the other to move to the right. The heavier skater will move with the smallest speed or velocity. Finally then, an exam question to try. Have a go. And pause the video after exam question slides and wait for your answers. Thank you for your attention. As always, please remember to check out our other revision channels through Microsoft Teams, On Century, and Seneca Learning. Thank you for your attention, and we'll see you next time.